Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm giving you guys another hurricane outlook. Today's video, though, we're going to feature the amount of storms we're expecting at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. We're going to get into how many tropical storms we're expecting, how many hurricanes I'm expecting, and how many major hurricanes I'm expecting in the Atlantic hurricane season this year. So really stay tuned for that. I'm very excited about that. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know last time I made a hurricane outlook, I asked you guys how many major hurricanes you thought we would have. And now I'm going to ask you how many hurricanes in general you think we're going to have. I want an exact number, not a range. So give me the exact number you think is most likely. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. By the way, I wanted to let you guys know that I am going to be going live discussing this upcoming fall and winter in just a few moments, probably from the time you're watching this. It might be already over, but you can check that out on my channel. Please come join us. It's going to be an open discussion where I'm going to be answering questions and just talking about some upcoming events. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'd love to see you there. Now let's get into this video, and the first thing we're going to talk about is the biggest factor this hurricane season, and that's that blue guy in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's called our La Nina, and that's really going to encourage hurricane development. Usually we see big hurricane years. Every single year we have a La Nina, and that's pretty consistent, actually. Uh, so we're seeing a La Nina, and it's developing rapidly, actually. We're going to talk a lot about that in this video, and that's going to be a huge factor moving forward into this hurricane season, and it could really support a super hurricane season. All right, now we're about to move on, and we're going to talk more about that La Nina. We're not only going to talk about the current status of that La Nina, but also the expected changes as we move forward. All right, so here's a graph we're taking a look at here, and this shows us our current status of our Nino 3.4 index. And really, that's just a measurement of the ENSO region, which is our El Nino or La Nina. And you can see up until the dates are at the bottom, but up until about uh, May or April 24th, we were pretty consistent in a weak El Nino, but it continued to drop off from that point all the way to where we're at now, which is May 22nd. And it's, it's moved all the way to a week La Nina from a week El Nino in about a month. So that is a very drastic change for a very short amount of time. One month, we usually don't see that much of a change that quickly. So this thing is really turning around very, very fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our CFS version 2 model. And we're going to take a look at its sea surface temperature forecast. So here is for tomorrow. So basically, this is what we're looking at right now. You can see that blue and green area there in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, more of the East Pacific, so up against the Americas there. Uh, and you can see that we are looking at a pretty good La Nina. But let's look at how it thinks it's going to look by time we're to early July. And you can see it's going to get much, much stronger with widespread greens and even brighter greens, which is indicating three degrees below average Celsius, which is almost moving towards a moderate La Nina. So it thinks this thing is going to develop very quickly and become actually a moderate to strong La Nina. Do I think that that is likely? Well, we're going to have to wait and see, but I do think it is certainly possible. So that's why I'm definitely paying attention to what this model is showing here, because with how quickly it's changed so far, I think that it is very possible that we see a moderate to strong La Nina. And you might be wondering here to yourself, is a medium to strong La Nina going to be a bigger impact for the hurricane season than a weaker La Nina? And the answer is yes, we are going to see uh, more encouragement for hurricane development, the stronger the La Nina gets. So that is a huge factor moving forward, obviously. So we're about to move on and we're going to stop talking about La Nina. You're probably bored of talking about that. So we're going to start talking about our hurricane season forecast maps that we drew here from Direct Weather. So I'm very excited to present all of these to you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in a second. All right, and you might have seen these in a previous video. I made a video where I featured these, I think, back in April or maybe possibly even March. And this is our most up-to-date hurricane season forecast maps. I am going to be updating this for you guys in the month of June. I know I'm going to be making my final hurricane season outlook where I'm going to update all of these. But for now, here's our most up-to-date forecast maps that we have available as of right now from Direct Weather. And here's our, here's our uh, sea surface temperature forecast. We're expecting most of the Atlantic to be slightly above average temp sea surface temperatures at least. And if you're wondering what that means for the hurricane season, 
the more above average the sea surface temperatures are, the better for hurricane development it is. So this is also another factor that really encourages these hurricanes to develop stronger or possibly even give us more tropical storms in general. All right, now let's take a look at that second layer, and this is where we're more confident that things will be above average as far as sea surface temperatures. And the important thing to note here is the very eastern edge of this orange shade is where hurricanes usually begin to develop offshore of Africa, and it also stays very far above normal as we see where they head towards the Caribbean, the Gulf, uh, as well as the United States. This is usually the direction they head. They usually take this orange area all the way towards west towards the United States. Uh, so this is going to really help development of these hurricanes and it's going to help them intensify further and possibly even give us more storms than what would be possible if we had below average temperatures in these regions. So we're going to see a lot of these storms be able to intensify further throughout what we call our main development region, which again is that Africa to the United States uh, track that it takes through the Atlantic. But also look at the Gulf of Mexico in that orange shade as well, which would be homegrown systems uh, it would give them a better chance of developing further, which we call systems that grow offshore of the United States in the Gulf homegrown system. So that's what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and move on. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our wind shear forecast, as well as our development chance forecast, and then our overall forecast for the hurricane season. And then again, I'm going to present to you guys my very exciting uh, amount of tropical storms, amount of hurricanes, and amount of major hurricane forecast at the end of this video. All right, and here's that wind shear forecast, and wind shear is something that you don't want for hurricane development. And here's the thing, this is where La Nina actually makes its impact. When we have a La Nina, that lowers the wind shear in the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what makes a La Nina impact the hurricane season. With, no, with little to no wind shear in the Atlantic, that really helps these storms just develop however much they can without wind really interfering with it. When we have an El Nino, however, that really encourages a lot of wind shear in the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what causes El Ninos to mean below average hurricane seasons and La Nina to cause above average hurricane seasons. And really there isn't much fluctuation with that. That's a very strong correlation there. Uh, so when we see a La Nina, we usually know that means we're pretty sure we're going to have an above average hurricane season. Also, NOAA came out with their hurricane season forecast, I think yesterday, and they completely agree with me on all of this. Just in case you're doubting, they think it's going to be a very major hurricane season as well. All right, now let's look at that development forecast. And really what this just means is how favorable is development going to be for different regions in the Atlantic? So we're starting out here. I think we will have slightly above average development within this pink shade here for the Gulf, the East Coast, uh, all throughout the Caribbean as well. So we're really going to see a lot of development that is above average in these regions. However, there is an area that I think will be even further above average, and it's this red region, our main development region. Again, we're going to have below average shear, above average sea surface temperatures, and those are two things that really really indicate that we will have a lot of hurricane development within this red region. We usually do see a lot of hurricane development, but I mean even further more than what we would typically be expecting. I hope that's very, very clear what I'm saying there. All right, now we're about to move on and we're going to get into that overall hurricane forecast where we're just going to talk about different regions and what we're expecting in general. So basically more applicable terms. And then we're going to get into that Again, how many tropical storms we're expecting, how many hurricanes we're expecting, and how many major hurricanes we're expecting this hurricane season. All right, so here's that overall forecast. I'm going to start with this blue region here for the southern United States as well as the Gulf. That's our best chance for a land falling hurricane or tropical storm or major hurricane or multiple. I don't know. But this is the best chance for landfall of any of those uh, within this blue region. I think that the Gulf is going to have a pretty big year. The East Coast is a wild card there in that pink area. It really depends on what kind of high pressure system we have in the Atlantic. So we could have above average development, but really have no impacts for the East Coast. It really depends on that high pressure system and if it encourages storms to curve up the East Coast. So we could have all of these perfect uh, implications, all of these perfect key signs for development and we could have a way above average hurricane year 
However, that might mean not mean we get any hurricanes or tropical storms for the East Coast. It might not happen that way. They might go straight into the Gulf, which would mean best chance for landfall, and it usually is, and that's why I'm saying that. We have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures for this orange area down here offshore of Mexico, and I think that that might lead to above average development, but this red region is the area I'm most concerned about, and this is where we have very favorable conditions for hurricanes, and they might be major hurricanes by the time they reach the very western edge of this, and that would mean that they're going to keep heading west or north. Um, and that's when they could head towards the United States and become a big problem. So when you see this area be very, very favorable, uh, that's a really bad sign. All right, now let's get into that numbers forecast that I told you guys I was going to do. So this is going to be the format. Again, named storms, which is tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes, then hurricanes, and then major hurricanes. All right, so here's an average season. We would have 12 named storms in an average season, six hurricanes in an average season, and two major hurricanes in, a, in an average season. All right, now let's get into our 2020 hurricane season forecast. And right off the bat, let's get into that named storms forecast. Here at Direct Weather, we are expecting 14 to 20 named storms. Again, I think the average was 12, so that's at least two more storms than what is typical, possibly even much, much more, and I think it will be much more than 14. Let's get into that hurricane numbers forecast, and we're expecting 7 to possibly even 11 hurricanes this season, which again, the average was 6, so we're seeing at least one more than what is average and possibly even almost double so I think that it is possible that we see close to 10 or 11 hurricanes this upcoming hurricane season with all the above average development. And then last but not least, our major hurricanes. Again, the average was two, and I'm expecting four to seven major hurricanes. Seven would be out of this world amount. That would be an extreme amount of major hurricanes. Uh, but I think we will be closer to probably four or five major hurricanes this season. And that doesn't mean they're going to hit the United States, by the way. This is just for the entire Atlantic. Some of these might not even impact land. We see that happen sometimes as well. But this is how many storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes I'm expecting for the Atlantic season this 2020 hurricane season. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that the tornado alley is moving eastward or do you think it's not really a permanent thing? We've seen that it has moved eastward over the past few years, uh, but I asked you guys this comment and Fled Weather said, just an unusual pattern, should be back to normal within the next five to 10 years, I think. Uh, and then he asked what I think, and I really agree with that. I think that we are just in a pattern. I don't think that this is a permanent change, and I think it will go back to where we see Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska be the real bullseye for those hurricanes and not the deep south and, you know, areas further east. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.